lived in Columbus since 2017, and I actually started um, kind of like a lease, right? Yeah, I started when I was 25 by buying a crappy little condo in Austin, and um, I house hacked. I didn't even know I had a name, so I just had some roommates, and over the years, some were good and some were bad, and it's kind of, you know, what you would expect. Then I ended up buying two more properties and moving into that one with, you know, owner occupant financing, renting out the previous one and had roommates where I was living too. So at one point I had like two long-term rentals and then two people living in my house. And it was like pretty cool because all my bills were paid and I had a W-2 income also. So I was like kind of making my way up like through real estate. Um, really not having any sort of mentorship, no sort of guidance, anything. I was just like fully making it up because I saw that it was working. And each one was like, okay, this is like a little bit better, a little bit better. I see how it could incrementally like be a career. Um, but it took me like quite a few years to really take it seriously. <laughs> it wasn't actually until I moved to Columbus. So I was going to Ria's, I was going to different meetups and was seeing like real estate could be a career. Um, and that was like 2018. I went full-time real estate. I was wholesaling everything. I got my license. Now exp explain to our folks what that means. Some of our well, new folks, yeah, they may not know what that means. Um, so wholesaling is basically, I do direct to seller marketing. Like we buy houses, cold calls, texts, stuff envelopes and send letters. And people will call and say like, okay, yeah, I want to sell my house. And then you have to screen the person, you have to put it under contract, um, you know, look at the house. There's so many steps involved. It's very actually like, if you learn how to wholesale, it's a pretty good foundation because you learn comparable sales, you learn rehab costs, you learn like how to talk to sellers, you learn negotiation and all that. So I was wholesaling everything for two years really. And I didn't get serious about keeping rentals until 20, 2019, 2018, 19. Um, and since then, we have gone from just a handful. We just closed on number 70. So, wow. yeah. And it's all, I use the Burr method. Do, do they know Burr? Some of the newbies probably do not. Yeah. yeah. So the Burr method is basically you buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. So you buy a, a house that's distressed or a seller that's a, in a distressed situation then you force appreciation, you increase the value by doing a renovation, you rent it out at market rent, you take this nice little package you just made back to the bank, to a, a long-term lender, and you refinance it, and then you get, ideally in the perfect world, you get all your money back, and you still have 25% equity, and then you go and do it again. So that's what I do. And because you're like getting your money back, you can just do it over and over and over. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. So Kathy didn't tell me to prepare anything. No, you're so good. Just, no. It, just, yeah. yeah. So if you have some questions, toss out your questions to Jesse. Yeah. Yeah. How old are you since we all died all the time? I am 36. Yeah. So I got serious like 10 years ago. Well, I no, I'm sorry. I started dabbling 10 years ago. I got serious about real estate in general like five years ago serious about the Burr method three years ago. 70 properties at age 36. It's like 25 a year. Man, yeah. I wish I two could a, go back. Two a month and, yeah, is pretty Know average. what I know now. Yeah. Do you have a goal for 24? How many properties are you going to buy? Are you setting me up, Bob? I was just trying to give you something to talk about. I've heard you play with the number. I'm the dabbling. I'm dabbling. It's a dabble. Okay. Um, with 52 houses in 52 weeks. Wow. I know. It's crazy. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I mean, we're trying to tighten up some You can processes. do it. You can do it. I know. I think I can. But do I want to? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you do. I know. Okay. So <laughs> tell, tell us your I'm best done. deal and tell us your most, your worst nightmare. Oh, God. Oh, my best deal. Okay. This is a lesson. So my best deal, there's, there's a few. One of my really good deals was April 3rd, 2020. Oh, she even knows the date. I do. So, April yeah. 3rd, 2020. So you know what was happening, like the world mm -hmm. was shutting down and I had my, I had a lot of money, not a lot, I had my life savings in a, like a robo 
advisor type platform. So the stocks were crashing. Everything was crashing. And I panicked and I pulled my money out and I didn't have anyone to call, no financial advisor to be like, hey, this is a terrible idea. So I pulled all my money out, basically at a loss. And then this deal, I swear to you, it just appeared like two days later after I got like enough money to buy it. And it was four houses. I didn't see any of them. Like I just drove the outside and was like, this is great. They were $107,000 for all four. Oh my. And appraised, I still haven't renovated them because I didn't need to. Where and, were oh, these? Two in the hilltop, two in London. Okay, Columbus. Okay. Yeah, Columbus, yeah. Um, and I mean, they were not like perfect, but they were fine. And the people wanted to stay and the price was so good. So I just like bur I refinanced them without doing the renovation. And they like six months later. Because they're rented. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, they're rented and the people were there and it was COVID. And I was like, this, I'm not going to disrupt. And I didn't know what I was doing, which actually turned out to be okay. But <laughs> um, so they appraised as is for $298,000. Wow. But I never would have been able, like the Thank lesson you. on it is I never would have been able to actually buy them if I didn't like panic sell some stocks. <laughs> so it worked out okay. Um, I really kicked myself for a while, but then I got those refinanced and was like, oh yeah, like that was way better. So the lesson is that you probably do have access to more money than you may think, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause I would never would have touched that stock before. I never would, I would have been like, oh, you know, I don't, that's not for real estate, don't touch it. But it, I tripled. Yeah. yeah. So it turned out okay. Yeah. That was my best deal. Your worst nightmare. Does it have to be a rental? No. Or whatever. Oh God, okay. So my worst nightmare was a house that I planned to keep as a rental. We put it under contract with a, with a directly with the seller with a $5,000 escrow holdback. So sometimes what happens is when you're working with distressed sellers, they literally do not have enough money to move out of the property that you are buying. Like, they're like, I can't, I have nowhere to go. I have no money to go anywhere. I can't hire a moving truck, whatever. And they don't have money for a deposit no, or first month's no, rent or anything. Yeah, they, they physically cannot move out without money. So we do like a two week escrow holdback where we will buy the house, say on day one, and then we pay the title company 100% of the purchase price. They hold back $5,000 from the seller in escrow and then the when they move out say 14 days later the last five thousand dollars is released so it's like a insurance policy almost mm -hmm. but it's like we'll let you stay for two weeks but we're gonna hold back five thousand dollars just to make sure you move out everyone understands it's like you're gonna get the money in okay so where it turned to be a nightmare that's all standard um when it became a nightmare is that the title company accidentally released all of the funds and not the $5,000 and somehow in two weeks they blew like a hundred thousand dollars and then somehow like two weeks comes by and they're like oh well where's our five thousand dollars we're looking at the HUD there's there is no more five thousand dollars so they say well we're not moving and I have nothing like I literally have, I can't. You have no leverage at this point. And they just said, "Well, you told us we were getting five thousand dollars, and we're not getting five thousand so, dollars." So they already got it. They already got it. It's not like we were keeping their money. It's that the title company released it early. No. They got the full proceeds, just not split up. So in their mind, they're getting five thousand dollars extra, extra. It's not, right. and they weren't. So they did not move. They didn't move. We had to file for an eviction. It turned into like three months of them just trashing the house. Tra like, I mean, it was, I obviously have pictures from before we bought it to when we bought it, like when we finally got possession, completely different house. So all of my numbers don't work anymore. Plus I have holding costs and eviction costs, all this just because of the title company. <laughs> they like paid me a little bit of money for their mistake, but it was not. So that was the only deal wow. I've ever lost money on. <laughs> I, I just sold it. I was too, I was like, I'm not fake. I just take someone by the house. I don't care. 
Yeah. Wow. You were like, I'm done with yeah. this one. Yeah. yeah. That was a bad one. Yeah, that was a bad one. All over $5,000. So read your HUD statements. Just because you're hiring someone that th- you think they're going to do it right, doesn't always happen. Who manages all your properties? You have a lot. We self-manage. Yeah. Wow. Now that's her sweet that's spot, is, the, yeah. is the self-managing. So tell us about the self-managing. So I want to clarify. When I say self-manage, I do not mean that you are the person doing all the things. I mean that you set the standard and you set the process and you can outsource what doesn't. Okay, this is not just for me. <laughs> you can you. say that all night long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking some home. My, my mom's like bringing some pizza. So. Some more Hawaiian? I owe you a slice. No, that's okay. <laughs> I know you're hungry. You eat half of mine won't last. <laughs> Just a slice. <laughs> Sorry. This half is blocked. It's coming down. It was roast beef, whatever they were. Open base. It was open, open base. Yeah. It's like a Thanksgiving meal. Yeah, it is. It is. My thing is. So, Jesse? Yes. Happy Happy year. Year. Another one gets cold. <laughs> deal with the wholesale? A long time. Like six months. Yeah. It was pretty stressful. It was stressful, but also I didn't really have any money, so I was doing everything by hand, like driving for dollars. Like all that takes a lot of time. If you have some money you can just throw out marketing, you can see a return much quicker. But I was like the slow and steady. No, I was just the slow, not even steady. I was all over the place. <laughs> so how many calls did you actually make? Not enough. Uh-oh. I'll tell you, I was, yeah, inconsistent. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about the, Sorry. the how you manage, self-manage. Yeah, so when I say self-manage, I don't mean like you're the one doing it. I just mean that you own the process of how things are done. So I have an admin who helps me. I... Don't really speak to our residents anymore. I will step in if she needs some, you know, authority. Something, mm-hmm. you know, I'm definitely the bad cop. And personality-wise and position-wise, you know, she's the good cop. So we work really well together. She's like, hey, let me go, you know, I'll go to the owner for something. Like, so you got to work with me. So she really, like, finagles our strong relationships with our residents. And then if they're doing something that, you know, is, we can't accept, then I'm the bad guy who puts puts their foot down. Um, so, yeah, self-management, we, I mean, should I go into, like, systems process? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We burr everything, so I'm not advertising, like, a beat-down unit, do right? It's got... It's got new kitchens, new baths, um, flooring, paint. We do all safety, all function items. So it's like a nice house. So they they rent pretty easily, and we can push market value because it's above the standard of, you know, we say like 10% above. Don't go too crazy in a neighborhood or you will never see the money back. But if you go like 10%, slightly nicer than what everyone else is offering, like, you know, the direction Columbus is going, People are willing to pay a little bit more in, you know, different neighborhoods. We're mostly in affordable housing, so we're like a thousand to like fourteen hundred is mm-hmm. a pretty sweet spot, pretty common sweet spot for rents. But you can, if you are providing a nice, safe, clean, decently, you know, just standard house, it gets rented really quickly. So we're putting them on Zillow, screening applications through Zillow. We do um, only pre-approved showings. Like, I'm not just, no one's driving all over the city to be showing properties to people who aren't qualified. And then if they, well, we do self-showings. This is a little controversial. So we'll give someone, like, they send their driver's license, and then we give them the lockbox code, and they can go see it on their own time, take as much time as they need. Let us know if they like it. And if they like it, then we do the full approval, like checking references, employment, all that. And then if they're approved, we do a digital lease signing. So, like, honestly, in theory, we've never met the people as they're moving in. Um, but we know a lot about them, like a lot about them. We've talked to them on the phone, all this, but I'm not like, I haven't, like, gone out to meet them. Yeah. 
then you get it rented mm -hmm. and then they move in and then you just make sure that you're responsible i mean we're responsible for someone's housing right it's like a huge part of your life your your home is your safety so anytime there's like a high emotion conversation we just like try to keep that in mind but as long as you understand that people are just really like I said, just high emotions, then you can regulate the conversations and you do what you're supposed to do, they do what they're supposed to do, and it's mostly smooth, <laughs> but obviously not always. So, yeah. at the lower end, this, this might not apply, but just curiosity, because you have so many doors, questions come up about what is bringing, because Columbus is one of the hottest markets in the country yeah. right now. What are you seeing as why? What is bringing so many people to Columbus? Oh my god. I'm not like, trying to eat and talk, so I hope that's okay with y'all. Um, Only if you share. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, everyone says Intel, that's like the short answer. That's still like years away. Right. So. I get that from Blondie here all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Intel is obviously like a huge driving factor. But the things that brought Intel here are the same things that have brought all the other, you know, tech and headquarters here. We have a university where a lot of people don't leave, so we're, you know, putting out. I grew up in Austin, and Austin and Columbus are so similar. Just, I feel like Columbus is like 10 years behind on development. And Columbus is planning way better. Like, the planning in the city is so impressive. I watched a city, like, just completely disregard what they needed to do to sustain that growth and Columbus is doing everything that they're supposed to so it's gonna it's gonna blow up but I mean it is blowing up but I think in a like strategic way versus just like everyone come to Colum you know come to Columbus and just free for all um, so d yeah major city university town the Midwest, I mean, people are leaving all the coasts because cost of living. Mm -hmm. We have nice people, nice cost of living. Um, like, why why wouldn't you come here? I think people uh, are starting I'm here. to... I just want your opinion yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think people are starting to figure it out. So, I, say, I would always say, like, in Austin, it started blowing up when we started hitting, like, the top ten lists for everything. Like, top ten food cities, top ten city to be single, top ten whatever. And I know that that's not, like, a true economic driving factor, but it's putting the city that maybe someone wasn't thinking of mm -hmm. on the map. And then they go to do the research, and they're mm -hmm. like, okay, this actually is a cool city. So, these top ten lists is just, like, getting Columbus in people's minds. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Yeah, Columbus does have a very um, high average graduate rate, mm -hmm. very high average salary. Mm -hmm. our, our home average, um, to buy a home is still $100,000 under the mm -hmm. national average. People are getting paid well, and it's cheap to live here. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, the coasts are not only rising in living costs, but you know, climate change is yeah. rising on people's minds. Oh, yeah, your house will burn down. Or, or, it's a, it's a perfect the form of reasons why yeah. to move yeah. to the Midwest, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, as soon as I literally, so I moved here for a job and drove in, it was kind of a bold move. I had never visited anything. And we drove in with like a uh, car full of stuff and my dog and whatever. And I like drove in and I swear to you in 10 minutes, I was like, oh, it's just Austin. Like this is literally just Austin. Like we'll be fine. So we're, we're over here laughing because we did exactly the opposite with our daughter. She got her job in Austin. Did she? So we, we traded. We, yeah, we literally drove her to Austin. And Did you? <laughs> nice. The car full of stuff. Yeah. And, oh, wow, look at this nice city. Yeah, it's and like a great city. It's like home. Yeah. So, I missed it in Austin. I had three properties at one time, but you're not going to retire on three properties. I hate to tell you now. <laughs> um, so, I just vowed pretty early on that I wasn't going to miss it again. And so, I'm just buying everything I can. It's like Monopoly. Mm -hmm. There is a point in my life where I needed some cash, and I just sold the house. Like, I was traveling, and I basically ran out of money, and I wanted to keep traveling. So I was like, oh, I'll just, like, sell the house. <laughs> and it was, like, basically, like, real life Monopoly. Yeah. Okay, she's, she, she wants to eat. So anybody have a question for her while, while she eats in between there? <laughs> we just came back from the big... Um, 
real estate yeah. convention in Cincinnati, and they had the whole cash flow game mm. going on. They actually did a cash flow tournament. Has has anybody here played the cash flow? I was there. Yep. I was there. Yep. Did you guys play cash flow? I did. You did? Okay. How did you do? <laughs> Yes, I love it. So we didn't get to meet you, so tell us who you are and how many properties you have. I've got three. I do know. I, I, don't, I don't have any properties yet. I'm doing those. Uh, probably going to go ahead and start branching off into SDR. Okay. Uh, and I, too, have just come off of the uh, summit in uh, Cincinnati, which is my head is exploding from so much completion and knowledge. Well, welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you. Sorry. Nope, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> you're good, you're good. Any any questions for Jesse? So Jesse, have you played that cash flow game at all? I have heard of it. I've never played it. Why? It's it's real estate monopoly. I mean it is like totally it's, real estate. Mm -hmm. Robert Kiyosaki? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that. Mm -hmm. I would buy it. <coughs> you have a copy of it, right? Of the board game? Yes, 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 yes. yes. see yes. what's coming here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We'll we'll have our own little tournament. Everybody's aware of it. There's this big, huge cash flow game going on tomorrow. Uh, just do a search on Meetup. Uh, it starts at 2 o'clock. It's going to go all the way to 5 30. Um, somewhere downtown here. I think it's on the front. Okay. Okay. We'll do it. Not tomorrow. I'm sorry. Saturday. Saturday. Okay. 